So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, de decline your afternoon according to your time zone, of course. Uh, we are here for the second uh, uh, part of this uh, full session classes on uh, R and species distribution modeling. Uh, also today, it will be more R than species distribution modeling. Uh, this will be the topic of the next week. So, <clears throat> if uh, Francesco is uh, ready, uh, we can uh, go uh, on to the second part of the course. Francesco, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, just an idea. If someone has uh, questions or uh, whatever, Francesco, tell me if uh, this is uh, okay for you. We can uh, uh, move questions uh, and whatever at the end of uh, these two hours. It's okay for everybody? Well, I take that as a yes. <laughs> okay. okay, Francesco, uh, I will say that it's up to you. So if you can start sharing your screen. Okay, thank you. We are here. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, I hope you still alive after the first class. But I see quite a few people again today. And uh, I will share my screen right now. Okay. There you are. Okay. Okay. Um, today we'll we'll start to work a bit more with R. Okay, so uh, the questions at the beginning was to learn how to do uh, distribution modeling, but of course uh, you need to know quite a few things about the language and the grammar and the syntax that we uh, we will use. Uh, so today we will uh, work again on uh, our uh, sample uh, uh, our sample issue, and uh, we will talk about how to work with data, which kind of data we we can use uh, uh, with R, and uh, we will try to show you some uh, uh, basic plotting. Uh, that's what you need to get confident with uh, with this instrument. Okay. Uh, what we will do today, we will learn how to do create our own data, how to load data, and we will try to organize our data. So we will do some very, very, very basic and easy statistics and some uh, we will see a couple of examples for uh, plotting using two different ways of plotting. Uh, a, an old one, but is, in, is still used, and uh, uh, a, a new one. Okay, if you want to have a look at what we will do today, and uh, if you want more information, uh, you can have uh, you can go on on the internet and here you can find a lot a lot a lot of, ma of materials useful for uh, uh, to learn using R and uh, uh, I show you something that uh, I sent you some uh, some material and Damiano shared the links where you can find some material actually there are um, two main uh, folder in one folder uh, you can find all the examples I shown you last time and I will show you today. In the same folder, there is a data folder where you can find all the data we are going to use you for the example of last time and of the example of today. So uh, if you need anything, you can uh, uh, try and work on your computer with this uh, data set and with these uh, scripts. Okay? Then you can find also in the material we sent you and, and at the link that Damiano pasted in the chat, 
uh, other two folders, one with a cheat sheet, so our simple reference card that we show you uh, last time, in the first lecture, where you can find basic commands and how to do something in a pretty quick and easy way. And then some of the most important uh, textbooks about uh, R, uh, and uh, you can you can have it and read it, and uh, you can find something useful for you. I hope this is going to be useful for you. So if you need anything, you can find almost everything in these uh, uh, attachments. And if you need something else, please feel free just to email us and uh, ask us what you need. So starting analysis always starts from data. OK, let's let's um, uh, think that we already planned our uh, our monitoring. We collected data and we start from data. But where can I find data on my laptop or I should create them? Uh, actually, in R, there are different time, type of containers for different uh, data, and you can see this on the right side of these slides. These are data objects. We saw vector last time in the first lessons, uh, but we also have metrics, data frame, and list. And today we will focus mainly on data frame that is the object that uh, you will probably uh, use more uh, working with R. And inside this object, you can uh, have data, different data types. So you can have logical data, for example, true or false, just to, to understand each other, integer, numeric, but you can work also with character, factor, and any other type of uh, of data. So uh, let's think, uh, let's go back to the first lesson and think uh, uh, to a very, very basic uh, example. Uh, you can find the example exactly on your, uh, on the attachment I, I sent you. Let's start uh, from here. Let me see. Okay. Can you see my screen? Okay, here we are again in R Studio, as I showed you last time. Actually, R is here. As I showed you last time, R always tells you uh, in which version uh, you, you are working. And, and here we have uh, our text editor where you can find and you can write whatever you want. If you open in the text editor your script, uh, example five, you can find the example five. That I know it, it could be, it could sound stupid, but it's useful to make you understand a, a very important concept. Let's create a, a vector, line four, you can see line four ER, and with the C, uh, with the C function, C stands for concatenate, okay? So uh, it, uh, how do we know it, this is a function? because you can see round brackets after that, okay? So anytime there are br round brackets, it means that we are working with a function. C, in this case, is a function, is a concatenate function. And as you can see here, we are creating a vector of numbers, actually of integer in, in this case, and it's just uh, uh, number one. Repeat it one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, okay? And we create a vector and we assign this value to a, an object that we call a line four, okay? So if we run here in our studio, you, you have the uh, just the button, the run that uh, sends the current line to the console. Otherwise, you can just copy and paste it in the console. So I run this line, okay? And as you can see here on the uh, right top uh, part of the screen in the environment, uh, you can see that we create a, 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 an object called A, and you can see that it is a, a numeric vector of uh, length A, 8, okay? So we do a, something similar, 
but short, uh, we create a shorter vector that we call B, okay, and it contains only two integers, four and zero, okay? Let's create it. Okay, we send it to the console. As you can see, we send it to the console. Remember that when the, the console doesn't say anything, okay, so there is just a, a passing line like that. It means that everything went fine, that R has, has been able to realize what you asked to, to it to do it, okay? So as you can see in the environment uh, here at the top, uh, right, we have now two objects, A and B. Uh, both are numerical vector of, num of numeric. And you can see one, the length of the first one is eight and the length of the second one is two, okay? Let's try to do what uh, uh, what we found, what we can find in line seven. It is a very, very, very easy uh, uh, function. So we want to sum two, two vectors, but can we sum two vectors of different lengths? What is going to, to happen? Let's have a look. So if we go here and we run the um, line seven, Look what happened here at the bottom on the left, okay? We have another vector, and as you can see, the length of this vector is the length of the longer vector that we sum. In this case, A, so its, it's length is uh, 8. And as you can see, what, what R did, okay? Just sum and repeat the sum, okay, of the vector B. To the vector a each time it could it, it could uh, sum it okay so we have a vector of line uh, or, or length eight this means that r is able to recycle okay every every object okay is iterable as you can see in this case at line seven as you note i didn't assign this operation to an object, okay? I didn't store this in a hobby, in an object. So if you don't do it, you can see something on the screen because it R tells to you what is what is doing. You can see the results, but as you can see in the in the environment here, you didn't create anything. So if you want to work with that vector Actually, you didn't create any vector. So let's try it and change, for example, line seven, uh, because we need to work with the result of this uh, uh, operation. Uh, what we can do, we can just create, for example, uh, a, a new vector. Let's call it right new vector. Okay, uh, look at me at the top on the left. And assign this operation to uh, this object, okay? So if we run, in this case, line number seven, okay? As you can see here, we run line number seven, but there is a line pulsing right on the cons uh, uh, here on the console, on the bottom of the left. So nothing happened. Actually, we create, if you look at the environment, a new vector, the same plant of a vector, and with the uh, inside the sum of the two vector, okay, is a, a a very a very useful things that uh, um, a, a very useful feature of R that uh, uh, can help you in make a lot of calculation using this uh, uh, this solution. Okay, but we were talking about data, okay, so. Uh, when we plan and we start working in a project, for example, a conservation project here, uh, I will show you a, an example. Uh, these examples is uh, on, um, I will show you these, okay. You can find this material in, uh, in, in the attachment that we sent to you, uh, okay. Uh, we use a, a, a data set that you can find in the book uh, 
uh, in this book, okay, a begins guide to R, you can use it. And in this book, you can find a lot of uh, example. I will just show you uh, the, the, the first one because uh, we can load data, but we can, we can also create our own data set, okay? In this case, uh, we are working on a morphometric measurement of eight birds, okay? You can see, okay, let me go back here. Uh, to these birds, as you can see, you can you can see eight different lines, okay? But if we don't have store, if we didn't store this data somewhere, how can we create it? Okay, there are different ways to create a data set. We actually already seen the first one. This uh, the first one is C, that is concatenate. Remember that. Uh, uh, shorter is the name of a function. It means that probably uh, you will use it a lot, a lot of time. Okay, so for the function that you will use more often, actually their name are very, very short. Okay, uh, instead for more complex a function, you you will have a longer, longer name. Here you can see. Uh, some example of function that you can use to create to create uh, your own data set, uh, for example, matrix, list, and data frame. So uh, in in the attachment file uh, that we sent to you, there is this example. You can find it. I will show you. This is the Zood, Zool code for chapter two scripts. Okay. It refers to the book that I already show you and uh, that you can find in the uh, in the in the attachment. OK, so let's start from the beginning. OK, you can you can see. Uh, in line 16, we do exactly the same thing we did just uh, uh, with the previous example. We create a vector of number. In this case, these are the num. Uh, the number that we can find on the on the table. So the is the length of the wing chord of different uh, or eight uh, 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 birds. Okay. So let's run line number sixteen. Okay. And uh, uh, you can see in the environment we create a new vector numeric again. It's similar to the one before. Okay. This time we are not working with uh, integer, but this time we are working with real numbers, okay? How can we move in our vector, okay? In, the, in this case, you can see we are working uh, in line uh, 17. Uh, you don't see um, round brackets, okay, but square brackets. Square brackets, it means that you are um, you are working inside your object. Okay? Okay, I, I, I heard some noises. Everyone, do you need anything? Uh, do you have any question? Okay, if you, I, I'll go back. Feel free to stop me just in case if you if you need something. Uh, okay, let's go back to line 70. I was saying I was telling to you that we and uh, now you can see uh, square brackets. Square brackets means that uh, you are um, moving inside your object. So if we put as in this case number one inside our brackets, we we want to see what there is in the first line of our object, okay? So if we pre, if we send to the console line number 17, okay, right here, you can see in the console, what tells you? Number 59, okay? If you see um, here, number 59 is uh, the first element of our object, okay? Okay, if we have a... Uh, a vector of number, okay. What what's the the the, the most basic uh, uh, 
uh, operation that we can do. We can do sum, mean, or um, standard deviation, or whatever we need about uh, basic operation. So if you look at a line number 19, okay, and we send it to the console, okay, we store the result as you can see here because we assign the uh, the result of this function to an object that we call s.win okay we create uh, if you look at the environment an object this object is a number okay and if we look at the uh, at this uh, object we can have the sum okay so uh, i know it can seem it sounds a bit stupid, that just really, really easy operation. But this time we run a sum and you can see the function is a very easy function and you can understand is a function because you can see the brackets, okay, right after the, uh, the word. As you run this function, okay, and if, we, if you get the concept, you can run very, very complex, a statistical model almost in the same way that's why i show i'm, I'm showing you this very basic uh, these very basic commands okay so if we can if we go on and and you remember the table i was showing you just um, just before okay we have different measurement okay so we have wing core tarsus head and weight of the uh, of the birds Okay, if we go back to the screen, we can create our different uh, vector and we store them in different variables. Okay, so tarsus, head and, and uh, weight, uh, line 23, 24, 25. Uh, if I get all the lines here in the text editor, I can send more than one line, okay, all together to the console. So you can see here on the bottom of the console, again, there is a pulsing line. It means that everything went in the correct way. And you can see in your environment that we create a new vector, okay? Okay, uh, now I'll write something here at the bottom in the console. Uh, I want to do the same thing we did in line number uh, 19. Uh, sum, use the, the function sum but this time not on the wing uh, chord uh, uh, vector, but on the head vector. So what we create in line number four, okay? So I do the, exactly the same thing. Uh, you can look at me at the bottom on the left. I sum, so function, first thing, uh, brackets. If you open around brackets, automatically, are close the brackets so you need to type just the open brackets okay it helps you to remember that you always have to close uh, your brackets and let's uh, print inside the name of the vector i want to sum if i run i run this okay here is the result that you get n a okay i was waiting a number not n a what what the hell is an, an A? It means that is uh, not a number, okay? But why is not a number, okay? The the result of the function, okay? If we look at a line 24, okay, we insert a strange value at the, uh, for the last uh, element of this vector, okay, is an A. That means that we don't have that value, okay? Remember that an A, not a number, doesn't mean that is a zero because zero is always a, an important value when we, we we get measure okay so zero is a number okay all, as all the other numbers so if you are if you have a missing value okay as in this case we didn't get the measure for example uh, we were handling an animal in this case the bird and we got all the measurement but we uh, the bird flew away while we were measuring it happens uh, with me with, uh, uh, for example, with squirrels on the hairs I've been working with, and uh, maybe we, we have some missing value, okay? When you, you work with a very, very big data set, okay, 
uh, it happens quite often that you have missing value. But uh, if you try to sum number with not number, the result is not number. Can we work with this? Can we still work with this? Yes, we can still work because uh, the sum function can allow you as almost all the function to tell it that we don't want to work with not a number. So it's fine if we sum the other, all the numbers and we uh, remove what is not a number. How can we do it? As you can see in line number 27, here we have the function sum, open and close brackets, okay. Uh, what we want to sum, the vector head, and we can pass several arguments, okay? For every function, you can pass several arguments. In this case, the first argument is the vector, and the second argument is an option that uh, is called na.rm, and you can find this option. I'm showing it to you because you will find in almost any, um, any function that you will use. Uh, that allows you to tell to the function if we, uh, if you want to remove the what is not a number, okay? And here we say not uh, na dot rm uh, equal to true, okay? It means that we are running something that, uh, uh, in this case, the function we remove if uh, anything is not a number. Let's run line number 27, okay? Okay, as you can see here at the bottom of the left, now this time we have uh, as a result a number, okay? That is the sum of the first seven element of the uh, head uh, vector. And uh, uh, this time we have been able to, uh, to use our function, okay? This is, uh, a good example. If we don't know how to uh, work with our function, I would like to remind to you, uh, which is the most important uh, function that we need, that is the question mark, okay? So, for example, uh, if we find something that we do not expect, uh, also with, the, with this um, very easy function, that is sum, we can just Type the look at me at the bottom of the left of the left in the console the question mark the function that you want to learn about okay as you can see while you are typing uh, R already suggests you something that you can you can look for in this time I want just the simple uh, function sum okay and you can see here on the uh, on the bottom right, uh, the help page, the main page of the command or the function sum, okay, that we can find the uh, package base. Here is the simple, uh, uh, simple description, and here in the arguments part, okay, what does it tells us? First, uh, that we have to insert a numeric or some a vector to sum, okay, our data. Okay, and then the other argument is an a dot r r m. Okay, and it tells you what it does. Okay, so this is very easy for fun for this function. But believe me, once you get used to think in this way, you can uh, use very uh, more complex function. Okay, uh, let's go on a, a, a little bit further. Okay. So uh, actually, we want to create what? We are starting from here. We are still uh, looking at different vectors, okay, separately. But we want something that is stuck all together, okay? So let's try to create uh, a something. I don't know what is going to be, okay? That we uh, that concatenate what? our vector. What happens if we concatenate our vector? If you look at line number 29, we always have uh, the same easy function that is C. You can see function because it, we can see round brackets. And in this case, we create something 
that concatenate what? Different vector, not different numbers, but every element of these is a vector. Okay, so what is going to happen now? Let's run line number 29. Okay, if we look at line, uh, what happened uh, in our environment and we look at bird data, is numeric vector of length 32. Okay, so let's see what happened. Uh, let's have a look at bird data here in the console. I just print bird data. Okay, is this what we were looking for? Probably not really, because it doesn't look exactly as our spreadsheet that I shown you before. So what I do here, I create an ID, okay, vector. As you can see, we have, uh, I repeat, for example, uh, four different ID, okay. If we look ID here at the bottom left in the console, it's just in an easy vector of length again 32 with four different numbers. Repeat it how many times? Eight times. How many birds we are measuring? Eight birds, okay? Actually, if you look at line 30, and if you try to run line 34 in this case, look what happens. Okay, we have the same results. I know this again must be, uh, seems uh, very silly and stupid, but this just to remind you that in R, you don't have just one solution, okay? You can find your own solution. Sometimes uh, it can seem maybe uh, a little bit more complicated or a little bit easier. Uh, there's no problem, okay? If you find your own solution, you can work with your own solution, okay? If you look at line number 34, you can see something different. Step forward again. Here we have the word IP, rep, that what, what can, what could do actually the function rep, if you think about, replicate something, okay? Uh, remember that the name of the function are strict, strictly related to the uh, what the function does. Okay, if you want to see what does the function, what the rep function does, uh, just type a question mark rep and press enter. You you will uh, we, you can look at the main page. Okay, but here there is a step forward. There's something strange that we didn't do we didn't do before. What we that what we do pass to the function here is another function, okay? So we can insert a function inside another function because if you look here, we have uh, open round brackets and another open round brackets. It means that we are passing to the as argument to the function wrap the function concatenate, okay? And if you look. Here is the first argument of the function rep. Then we have a comma. Comma is the, uh, the, uh, the sign that we use to separate arguments inside the function. And then we say each is another argument that is equal to eight, okay? So we are passing a function to another function. The result is exactly the same we are telling to this function to replicate eight times the vector that we create using concatenate one, two, three, four, okay? Again, line number 35, we do exactly the same thing in a different way and we get exactly the same results, okay? This is again similar for line 36. Here we have a new function, Again, the new function is sec sequence, okay? Again, remember the name of the function is pretty easy to, uh, uh, it, it, it helps us to tell us what the, the, the function actually does, okay? And here we create a sequence that goes from one to four and step by one, okay? 
So if we run line number 30, uh, 36, actually this time, as you can see, I assign the result to an object is A. If we look at A and we look at the bottom here, that's what that's what we have. OK, we create a vector one, two, three, four sequence. OK, on number from one to four. If I run line number four, I replicate what? The vector each time, a time, OK? If I run line number 40, here again the same results. In these few lines from 34 to 40, we did exactly the same thing in several different ways. Choose your own way, OK? How do you choose your own way? It's kind of your way to think about the problem, OK? Or just because uh, you went on uh, on the Internet or, or someone of your colleague passed a, a, a script to you, a program to you, and uh, you just copy and paste. Remember that using R, as long as you understand what you are doing, you can copy and paste. This is the most uh, important things you will do, actually. Uh, this means that probably you don't need what, I, <laughs> what I'm telling to you today. No, it's, it's not exactly like this. But remember that uh, someone else uh, surely already did what you do. So if you can find the question and choose and, and know what you want to do, you can find something already prepared for you. Then actually, if you know the language, you can repeat what you are copying and pasting. OK, let's go uh, a little bit further. OK, uh, we, cre we create in this case, as you can see, line uh, number 44. Again, another vector that I call var names. Uh, I know that I'm creating a vector because I see the function C again concatenate with different elements. I create what in this case, if I if you look on the environment here is a vector of length four, but in this case, you don't see uh, is a numeric vector, but you can see is a character vector. CHR means that you have character inside. So again, R can work both with numbers and vectors. And this is going to be very, and, and character, sorry. This is going to be very important. We can see after uh, in, a, in another example, this is going to be very important because uh, sometimes what we measure in field is not a number, but is a feature, for example, of an animal, a male or a female a juvenile or an adult, OK? So we have age, we have sex, sex classes, OK? After a while, you are working. Uh, and when I started, actually, for example, I was using, uh, because uh, the program I was using, they, they could, could handle just numbers, OK, and not charters. I was using one to say I was working on male, and two, to say I was working on female, OK? Let's open the script and that data set after a few years. Will you remember that one is male and two is female and not the opposite? Or for example, if you have more classes, for each class you have uh, uh, juvenile, sub-adults, adults, old individuals, OK, so it's going to be a, a, a bit difficult. So in R, we can use character vector too. OK. Now I create a, a, an ID vector. If you look at line number 20, uh, 45, sorry. OK. If we look at this vector, I just print it here on the console. OK, this time again, 32 elements. OK, but I repeat a charter and not a number. OK, what is going to happen in line 48 if I uh, there is a, a little different in this function? OK, before I used the function C concatenate, 
In this case, at line 48, I can see C bind. This is another function. Let's have a look at what this function does. I I write in the console the question mark and then I write C bind. Okay. Here we have the main page and what does C bind? Combine our objects by rows and columns. Okay. So here is something different. Okay. Rows and colors. Let's try to run line 48 and save this object, uh, save this, the result in the object Z. Okay. If you look up in your environment on the top of the right, you have this object. Uh, there is something strange, it's numeric, okay? And, but it, it has two elements. One is uh, one eight and one is one four, okay? Let's have a look here in the console what the uh, Z element looks like, okay? Here what you, here what you have it's more similar to what we are we were trying to create okay if we uh, want to know what z is uh, we can type in our uh, in our console the function str okay that means is a, a short version for the word structure okay and we ask so is a function of struct uh, str. So we open and close the uh, round brackets and we insert the name of the object that you want to know the structure. Okay. Okay. Is a numeric vector. Okay. Uh, is a list. Okay. And this is what we what we have. Okay. So uh, we have different dimension, okay, in line number 49, as you can see, I use a, a new function, the function is dim, dim is a short word uh, version to say dimension, if I run line number 49, okay, how many dimension you think Z has got? Let's see, okay, two dimension, one is eight and one is four, so we have eight rows and four columns, okay? Uh, here we do similar things, okay? Uh, always to create a vector in a different way. So I'm not going longer on this part. You can run the script to just to try understand, to understand how you can create your own data set. Uh, I, I would like to go on a little bit uh, farther. Okay, here you have the uh, uh, in line 65 another function as called matrix. Okay, let's create a matrix. Matrix. What do you think when you think about a matrix? A two dimension. A matrix in this case a, a, a two dimension object. Okay, with eight row and four columns, okay? Let's create uh, this object called the mat, okay? Uh, with a function matrix, okay? And let's have a look at what matrix or this the mat is, okay? We create an empty matrix in this case of eight rows and four columns, okay? In this case, you can see NA because I didn't insert again yet the number inside but I can feel, I can feel the, uh, the matrix with the number that I need, okay? Let's have a look at this very important uh, part. Here we are looking at the math and what you can see after the math. Square brackets in this case, okay? Square brackets, as I told you before, are important because you can use them to go inside your object, okay? It's not a function, but you, you use them to move inside your object. Differently from before, you can see a comma here, okay? And it comes before the comma, you works on line. Everything comes after comma, you works on columns. In this case, it means that we are creating a vector, 
okay? Line 68, if you look at it. And we are in, uh, working, uh, adding this vector to the first column of the matrix D map, okay? I run this function, okay, this line, this command. Let's have a look at what D map is now. As you can see now in the console, we insert the vector with our win code measurement in the first column of the matrix, okay? If we repeat this operation for the second, the third and the fourth column of the matrix, okay? You can see 69, 71, and 73. We can run all together, okay? And we look at the map, okay, in the console. Here we are back again to what we created before, okay? What's different here? That actually we don't have, in this case, the name of our columns. How can we remember that one, two, three of the four columns uh, measurement is uh, the tarsus instead of the head or of the weight? Of course, we can, we can give the name to the columns, okay? Let's have a look of the, of the function number 78. What you can see now here that we didn't see before. If you look carefully, this line that is pretty simple, actually, you see that you have a function on the right and you assign the results to a what? Not just to an element or to an object, but to a function on the left, okay? This is very important, again, is, uh, this is very useful uh, in R, okay? Uh, this means it's very plastic, that you can use it pretty easily. What does the function call names does for you? It just give, gives you the call names of, a, of an object. In this case, our matrix, okay? If I run only the first part of this function, okay? I highlight only the first part and I run in the console. Okay, what does uh, is the result? We are asking the call names to the matrix that hasn't got any call names. The result is null. I don't have any call names. But if I assign the function concatenate, the names of the column I want to create to this uh, to the call name function. Let's have a look what happens. I run the complete line number 78. Okay. And then let's have a look what happened to the map. Okay. Here we have the number of the call names, the, the name of the call or the column. Sorry. Again, this time, if I ask to the, uh, to R to tell me with the function call names, uh, which are the column names of the math of our object. Again, I run, okay, as you can see, this time is not null anymore, but we have the name of the, of the columns, okay? You can go on. Another important object, and uh, you can see, uh, and this is going to be uh, the, the, the last part of the script, but a, again, you can run all the function and you can work on it. You have all the sample and all the data set to work with. Uh, let's see number, line number 83, okay. The, we are, here we, we use the function data frame, data dot frame, okay, and we create an object. Okay, and what do we pass to data frame? We pass, in this case, four different columns, okay, with this name. Okay, let's have a look, run, we run line number 83, everything went fine. So we have a line pulsing down here. We have something different in, here, in our environment. As you can see, we don't have a vector anymore up here but 
uh, we have something with an arrow, uh, and this object you can uh, click and push on the uh, your cursor on the uh, on the object, and uh, R will help you to show what you what what your object is. Okay, so you can see here what we create with a function data dot frame, okay? And actually, if we ask again what this object is to R, how do we do it? Remember the function structure, okay? So structure, open and close your brackets, and we ask what which is the structure of the object we just create. D R uh, D F R M, okay, is a data frame with eight objects. It means eight lines of four variables, okay, and then it show you the beginning of each uh, columns, okay. You can see the name of the columns, okay, and it tells you what you can find inside each column numeric vectors okay let's see let's see our data frame here in the console that's what we have okay i hope that uh, then after you can have uh, other example with different data sets always from the uh, zur book for a, a beginner guide to, to R, and you can find this data set also in, uh, in the file that we sent to you, and you can find attaching the link that Damiano shared at the beginning. Let's go back to our slide. Today we spend most of the day on, uh, on R Studio and R, because this is the most important things, so we can get used to use R because the next two lessons will be a bit more complicated, okay? So you need to get used with the language and with the grammar, okay? So we create our data set in a different way, okay? But we did everything manually, okay? Most of the time we don't do, we do not work in this way, actually, this example was useful to understand uh, how to use a function and how to create an object, okay? And that we can use uh, uh, a function inside another function, okay? But most of the time we need to load data from something else. For example, uh, uh, you went uh, and outside in the field uh, and you record the weight of marmots or squirrels and you insert your data in a spreadsheet and then you have a huge spreadsheet and you don't want to type again your data inside R, but you can load your data from other file, okay? How can you, uh, how can we reload uh, our data, okay? The the most easy uh, way is to read something, okay? All the functions in R that allows you to load data start with the word read, actually. You can read a table, you can read a comma separate value file, but you can read what? You can read almost anything, also Excel file, okay? So we, uh, we look now at the uh, at the basic of a data frame, and then we will see how to load a, a data frame, okay? Data frame are the most common object in R. Uh, they are similar to spreadsheet, so it's pretty easy for everybody to think about it because are very similar to what we already uh, learned to use. Uh, each column has got a type, so it means that inside the column, you cannot have a different type of uh, data. So inside the column, you have no number, you have logical elements, but you cannot have number and logical elements inside a single column, okay? It works as a matrix and all the columns are named. Uh, 
to in to work with these let's go back to a an easy example that you also have in your data okay this is the sample number six if you load in your r studio uh, you can follow it by yourself on your uh, on your computer actually uh, in the basic r installation you got already uh, example of data set okay uh, and how to load this example is uh, uh, you, you can look at it uh, line number three so uh, there is a data set called iris okay if you run line number three okay let's try okay we can see that we create uh, a, an object uh, called iris okay iris is a data frame of 150 lines and five columns in this case okay if you click here uh, our studio allows you to to look at it okay what we we, we can see here uh, we can see uh, five columns four are by numbers and one is the name of the species they are uh, measure and for each species they measure a uh, different uh, feature of the of the flower the sepal length the sepal width the petal length and the petal width okay this is a very common data frame used to learn uh, how to do statistics you already have this data frame in the basic uh, installation of R if you want to get use also uh, with data frame and with basic statistics at line number seven I run the function structure as I said before str here I look which is the the, uh, the function the, the structure of the uh, of the data frame okay let's go to uh, line number 11 12 and 13 okay if we want to go to move inside a data frame uh, we, we can move in different way the most uh, common and the most important you will use is the square brackets as I already told you before so in the square brackets you can uh, select what you want for line before the comma and for uh, and for column after the comma so uh, let's look for a while uh, let's jump uh, line number 11 and go to line number 12 okay and if we run line number 12 what do you expect to to see as a result Okay, just think a few seconds about it, then I will run line number 12, okay. As you can see, we work only on the right side of the comma between the brackets, and we type in what? A character, inside the character as a string, uh, sorry, here you can see a string, okay species so if we run line number uh, 12 uh, you can see here. Uh, francesco sorry i yeah. cannot see the shared screen anymore you lost your screen francesco oh since when sorry <laughs> uh, a few seconds okay i don't know why i'll try again just uh, uh, when you started reasoning on what will happen running uh, the line you were on Okay, it's coming. There you are. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I will show you just uh, the, uh, the the last few uh, the last few things. Okay, uh, I I run here actually uh, line number twelve. Okay, and I uh, here on the on the console you can see the. Uh, the elements 
of the fifth column or our data frame. Uh, the column is species, and you can see that inside species we have these elements that are the names of the uh, of the species. As you can see here on the right of the comma, we use the word the, the sorry the string species. We, what do you expect if you, you we if we run the uh, line number thirteen? Okay, what's different from the previous line? Here we wrote the name of the column. Here we write the position of the column, the column number five. Okay, so I do expect we will look at the same thing exactly. Okay, let's run line number 13 and as you can see is exactly the same of line number 12 okay so we can move inside our data frame our object in different way okay again you can do your own way okay okay then we can work on our data frame making some slice for example OK, uh, what, what it means that we can work both on rows and on columns. If you look at a line number 15, OK, we are telling some, two different things to, uh, to Iris. Do something on lines, and here is a sequence one to three. And on the right side of the comma, work on the column separate length, okay? Let's run a line number, number 15, okay? We can get the element of separate length, or the column separate length, the first three elements, okay? This is a way to work with, okay? The other way to choose uh, inside your, to move inside your, uh, in a data frame that you will often use, that we, you will often find, is a very strange symbol. At least it was strange for me before I started to use R. Then you will uh, get used to it. Uh, is a dollar symbol, okay? If you use the name of your data frame, look at line number 11 here in the scripts. Uh, if you type the name of your data frame, then the symbol uh, dollar, then you can write the name of the uh, of the column after it, and you can move exactly as we did in line number 12. If you don't believe me, just run line number 11, and you get always the same things. Again, in R, you can move and you can do the, the things the way you prefer, okay? I know that sometimes when you have more than one way to work with, it could uh, uh, make uh, the things a bit more difficult, okay? Because if that's, there is just one way, okay, that's the way you learn one and you, uh, uh, you have to remember just that one. And instead, if you have more than one way, it can be difficult can become more difficult sorry uh, but believe me sometimes you will be able to use one way another way and you will find that uh, uh, is going to be uh, much uh, useful for your script to use one on another okay i suggest to you to run the last part of the script okay then i it's already 40 to 10. I would like to go and show you some uh, some other example, okay? Uh, so I go back to to the slides, okay? Remember that it that uh, within a square brackets you can move inside your uh, inside your data frame. And you can move, it means that you can select your and filter, okay, as you do in uh, the spreadsheet, row and column, but it means that you can apply something, a function to your row or to your column. Okay, you can find 
example uh, here and uh, of course we we've been talking about vector about data frame but we don't have uh, only this kind of object in R but we can have also list okay uh, I I'm not going to show you list today we don't have uh, uh, enough times but again you can exercise in the example I sent uh, we sent to you okay Okay, we've been able to load some data. Okay, but what what we have to do with our data? We the first step we have to check if everything went properly. Uh, uh, if they if the number we have are in the proper uh, in the proper format, if there is any outlier, so we can have a look easily to our data set. OK, and we don't have to check the single cell as we do in uh, uh, with our spreadsheet, but there are very, very easy function that can help us to use our to to have a look uh, pretty easily in our uh, in our data set. Now I want to show you a very a, another very easy example. You can find the data set on your uh, on the folder that I sent to you. I go back for a second to R Studio. Okay. Let me see. Okay. The data set is uh, the, the script example is the number 7B. Okay. You can see that every line in the scripts that we send to you uh, have comments trying to explain to you what uh, that command does okay so uh, let's have a look at example 7b so load and explore dear data okay you can the the data are from this paper okay so if you want you can have a look and you can find anything in the book that i show you uh, you before. Let's have a look at the first line, number four. Okay, sorry, the first uh, command. Okay, that is at line number four. Okay, this function is, uh, as you can see, there are more than there is there are more than one brackets. Okay, it means that we are passing a function to another function. Okay, the function that here we see that have the round bracket are ls okay and rm rm sorry okay so what does ls does let's run just ls here as you can see we do not give any argument to this function in this case let's have a look what happened on the uh, on the console okay ls what does it, it, it create what a list it gives you a list of the object you have in your environment so we've been working here now in our environment okay in, in, in R as you can see here okay we create all those objects okay, we can find but now we want to start okay we want to clean our desktop okay we want to clean our desk, our environment. So we create the list of the object. And what does RM does? This other function, RM stands for remove, okay? We want to remove the list of the object that are in our environment. So if we run line number four, okay? Here in the console, you see again, pulsing line okay everything went correctly but now our environment if you look at the top on the right is empty okay in most of the script i use i will show you and you will use i i will run this uh, line most of the time because when i start something new i do i do prefer to have everything clean okay 
but you can do again as you prefer okay but where are the data okay uh, what's going to do allora so what the, the first thing that i suggest is to create a variable file name okay we are working on dear data okay but where are these dear data okay if i show you the 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 folder that we sent to you inside the folder of the scripts you have a folder called data and here you can find different data set one of these data set is dear dot comma separated value data set okay we want to load this data set okay so we give the name of our data file in line number 10 okay as you can see now if we run the line number 10 you have in your environment what an object called data file that inside has got a string and the string is the name of our data uh, of our data set another important thing that we uh, we have to learn using r is uh, that as i said uh, la, the f during the first lesson everything is the is not on the r drive okay but uh, r working stores everything in the rem memory okay um, and to say to work in our data set uh, in uh, in the proper folder okay we have to tell him where we want to work okay so we need to set a working directory okay in this case i out which is the function to set the working directory of course it's set wd okay if you ask to her to our what does this function uh, let's write in the console a question mark okay write the name of the function let's have a look of the uh, man page okay here the help get or set the working directory okay so we have uh, the same main page for the get vd and the set vd function okay and here it tells you what it does and how it works what it creates and uh, here uh, it gives you some example okay here i fit i set our our working directory where here okay it means that i'm working in the src that means scripts and uh, in the data uh, uh, in the data um, folder, okay? If I ask here, I set it my working directory. If I ask which is my working directory, let's have a look in the console, just write get working directory, okay? And here is where we are working. This is on my computer, okay? You have to find a way to set the directory on your computer. Okay, I know this again. This seems the uh, a very very easy function, but for someone that is not used to work with uh, Unix or to work to program with program lines, probably this is going to be the most difficult thing to understand for today. But you will. Uh, everyone can can make it so just um, check on your computer where where you store the data we sent to you and fix the working directory in that folder so you can load and work on that on, on that data set okay so we have a comma separated file okay uh, we don't have uh, we have just two hours so i don't have the time to wait for you to 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 run every single line i can imagine that probably someone of you in in this moment has got some problem uh, i will help you to 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 solve it if you email to me later don't worry about it 
let's try to load this data set and have a look. So I will show you something more, uh, more interesting to be able to work for the next two lessons. Uh, as I said to you, we can load data from outside, from where? For our working directory. I use the function, as you can hear, a function. Again, I repeat always the same thing, but it's important because we have round brackets here. The function is called read.csv, uh, okay? And what I, which is the argument that I, I insert in this function is data file. But what is data file? Data file is an object that uh, contains a string with the name of our data set. Okay, let's run uh, line number 16. Okay, I store the result of line number 16. Remember, this is uh, uh, our, uh, our principal uh, signs that we use in R. So the arrow, it means that we assign the result of something or something happen on the right to something happen on the left okay here i create a new object called dear in this case okay and as you can see in our environment you can have uh, you can see the uh, the the object dear is uh, uh, a, an object of 100 and 1182 1, lines in nine columns. Okay. If you just click with your uh, mouse on it, you can have a look of it directly. Okay. But this is not very useful because it's very long. Okay. Since we work with very short data frame, data set, sorry, uh, there's no problem in looking directly. But if you want to find something inside here and you have more than 1,000 row and nine columns is going to be pretty difficult. But if you want to see it, to have a look of the data set, you can have a look at it. OK, let's go back to the uh, to the script. And explore the data. OK, uh, how many. Column and row has got this data set, of course, we learn that you can read it easily here but you can also ask it because we have a, a function called n row and n call that of course it tells you the number of row and the number of column the one of the most important function i already shown you is the structure function okay uh, of course here it tells us as you can see if we run uh, line number 23 that we work in there is a data frame of 11 182 objects uh, uh, 1182 objects and nine variables and the, these are the name of the variables okay and these are the current type of the car or the variables so character we got characters we got integers we got numeric, it means real numbers, again, character and integer, okay? In this data frame, we are working on uh, parasite on uh, deer, okay? So our measurement has been done for every, uh, every deer individual. So we have uh, in different year, in different month, uh, in different farm. OK, you can have a look of this uh, uh, data set and learn something uh, about it. And then uh, uh, we have several information about the deer. OK, for example, we have sex. As I told you, told you before, uh, we can have male and female in this case. How many male and how many female do we have in our data sets? In our data set, okay. Uh, let's run line number 27. Okay, line number 27 is a function, okay, and brackets. The function is table, okay. Uh, tables just count what you ask to count, okay. If you want to have a look at what table does, remember just question mark table 
you can have a look of the of the main page table is the uh, cross tabulation function that you can find in the spreadsheet okay is one of the functions that helps you to do cross tabulation and here if you look at the result of table at the bottom in the console you can say that for number number for number one we have 601 count and for number two we have 551 count but we were talking about sex okay one and two are not sex for me okay i do know if one is male or is female okay so we can record our uh, uh, our information inside this column okay uh, here you can see a, a, a more complex Okay, anyone else needs help? No? There was an open mic. Okay. Uh, so I go on. Uh, here in line 30, okay, you can see that we got what? A function called factor. It means it creates a factor. And what is a factor? Okay, we can work on charter and on factor and on numbers. Okay, a factor is a variable, uh, is a type of variable that is not strictly number, but can be also charter. Okay, so we take our column sex. Okay, you can see here what I use in line 30. Dear dollar sex, it means I get the data frame here and I I go to the column sex. Okay. Would I do the same thing we in a different way? Yes, of course, with square with square brackets. Okay. If you want to do a similar things, you can do. I I write it right now, okay, here, and you could do this open and close brackets, working on column and getting the column. Yes. OK, what I just wrote is exactly the same over or, or what there was written here. OK, OK, let's cancel this part. Then in this function, I say which are the levels I'm working to and here is one and two. OK. I want to name, so uh, setting the labels of this uh, of this level with M for female, male and F for female. Okay, let's run, and the results of this function, I put it in the sex column. Okay, let's have a look at what happened here. And be careful because there is something strange in this line. Let's run line number 30. Okay. Here again, we in the console we have a pulsing line, so it means everything went fine. If you look at the, uh, your environment, now your object has got a new variable. We we have nine variables, nine columns before. Now we have 10 variables, but I said I put the sex information, change it in the sex column. Okay, let's have a look at the word sex here in line number 30. I put in a new column because I call it, I, 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 I wrote sex with capital letters. Okay, so let's have a look of our data set. Okay. We have a column sex was present before with one and two, and then we have a sex capital uh, column uh, where we have M or F. OK, then we can remove one of the column, use the one we we prefer. But this is a, a way to uh, organize and fix our uh, our data sets. OK, we can do the same with a column class one four, very strange name, 
what does it mean? Probably these are the uh, the classes, the sex class, the sorry, the age classes, and we do exactly the same. We create a new column called class, and we do exactly the same. Uh, okay, so if we run line number thirty-seven. On the new column we create, so we do a cross tabulation, we count, okay, so now is more understandable, I think. We have 600 males and 550 females, okay? And so uh, the measurements are done differently, indifferently here, and so you can go on, so we we have different year, a different number of, uh, of counts, and, and go on. Actually, if you look at here, what we have uh, running line number 39, it's a bit strange again, because here we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 90, 99. So probably is here 1999, 20, 0, 21, 20, 22. So, okay, uh, we, we can also adjust and fix what we have, okay? Again, we can do the same thing using different function. If you, if we run line number 40, let's have a look at what happens. We have exactly the same thing as before, okay? But we introduce something new here that you will use for modeling and for statistic and for graph uh, pretty often. That is the formula way, okay, to write something in R. As you can see, we have this strange uh, uh, symbol. I, I sorry, I forget in English how to pronounce it. I asked to Damiano to help me how to say tilde in English. If Damiano is listening to me. Sorry, <clears throat> I had trouble uh, unlocking the mic. Tilda, Tilda in English is Tilda. <laughs> okay, 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 perfect. Is in English or in Italian we say exactly the same way. Uh, this symbol is very important because uh, we will use it to create formula, okay? So it means that we have dependent and independent variable, something before and something after. If you don't use anything before, you will uh, count, you will work on anything after. So here, for example, we are counting in all the data set because we don't have anything before the tilde, uh, what happens in the columns here, okay? And so we can, uh, we can go on. We can do it not just for one column, but for more than one column. Okay, for example, have a look uh, on line 45. Let's run that one. Okay, we want to count what happened in column six and in column year. So what do we have here? For every year, we have the number of male and females. Say, um, for every single year, we measure years in our uh, field project. Okay, so... Uh, do we have a, a proper, our data are distributing in, in a proper way? As you can see, 99, that probably has been the first year, has got a very few uh, measurement compared to the other, but we always have the same proportion of male and female, not always actually. Uh, is this kind of data set useful for our analysis? Well, probably it is, but is, it is representative of the population of deer, is it or not? Okay, that's a, this is not a problem using R, this is a theoretical and uh, uh, question that you have to uh, understand doing uh, your analysis, but it depends on what you know about your population, your while, um, about your conservation and research project, okay? So R helps us, in this case, to think about our theoretical question, okay? 
Okay, I I'm going on because the time is going is finishing. Okay, uh, I said to you uh, last time and before that we uh, would have a look uh, uh, to diagrams and figure and graphic and graphical aspects. Uh, actually, I will use a couple of examples to work with. Uh, to show you how to do some very easy analysis and uh, uh, to print some uh, uh, some plot. Here in this slide, you can see different way to use uh, R to plot. Okay, as you can see, you can you can plot almost anything with R. Also, uh, you can print uh, you can print image. Okay, uh, we will see. It. Uh, when we'll uh, uh, print some distribution model about the next uh, uh, next week, but this is the basic. These are the basic plot that we use in uh, in research and in uh, uh, paper. So you have line graph, scatter plot, uh, box plot, uh, uh, and histogram, and whatever you want. Okay. Uh, What's behind the creation of a of a figure? Uh, if you want to draw a diagram, OK, if you want to draw a figure, you should program the rules to build it, OK? If you can draw the diagram, you can run the analysis because running because running the analysis and running the the diagram is exactly the same, OK? There are several different ways to create a, a graph, a diagram. You can see the three main ways uh, on the bottom of this slide, uh, of this, uh, this slide, uh, the base format, the lattice uh, package, and the ggplot uh, way, okay? We now will pass through uh, two examples uh, I'm going a bit fast, but you have all the scripts, uh, all the data set, uh, you can run and uh, read the comments uh, and go on uh, with it. The fourth example is a real example. Uh, we are talking about uh, uh, bats. In this case, is the one you see on the picture, you know, Rhinolophus ferrum equinum. Uh, as you know, in several mammal species, the body condition index uh, uh, is a, an index of uh, fitness. Okay, is pretty in of pretty often used as index uh, of fitness. Okay, in our case, we work in three different study sites. In three dif in these three different study sites, we capture and measure individuals of these species, and we want to know if there is any difference in fitness between these uh, sites. How can we do? We can start from uh, easy statistics, mean standard deviation, and then we can add some uh, environmental variables. OK, so let's go to the example. Uh, let me see if I can find it. OK, is the example eight underscore box that you can find in the folder that we sent to you. OK, as you can see, you can uh, there is a lot of green writing over here. It means that everything has been uh, documented. So you can read uh, what we are doing, even if uh, me or Damiano are not exactly telling what we are doing. So again, let's have a look here. So the first part of our uh, way to work is to prepare the working environment. So again, I clean line number 35. I clean my environment, so my environment is, is empty, OK? As I told you last time, sometimes some function is inside, uh, uh, not in the base packages, but in, the, in other packages. And in, if I want to use those functions, I know to take the those functions from the bookshop to my library on the desktop, OK? The, uh, the way to do it is the function library, OK? Library is a function, as you can see, uh, the, the round brackets. And uh, inside this function, I 
Uh, as argument, I give the name of the package that contain the function I want to use during the um, during my program. Okay, and what do I do? I write beside the uh, the function uh, why and which function I use to uh, I use in this um, in this program. Okay, so I get the packages here. So I clean the environment, I get the packages I need to work, okay? Okay, as you can see, something's going on down here, okay? It means that uh, R was loading, sorry, here is the, in, in Italian, is uh, in, what you can read here in red is loading the package, loading the package, as I, as you can see here, I, I ask for loading three different packages, but here I have more packages loaded. This, the reason for this is that um, if in a, a package, in a package there could be a function, okay, that is inside another package. So anytime you install that packages, automatically it go and get it goes and gets also other packages that you need to run other function. Then I specify and set which is my working directory. Actually, my working directory is the same as before. If you've been working uh, in your computer on the directory uh, of the data that we sent to you, if we are still there. Indeed, if we ask to in the console to get which is our working directory okay you can see here in the console that we are already there so i don't need to run line number 42 in this case okay i get some data okay in two different way i create a data frame for site data okay that are the place where we went to uh, to work, okay. So the first example that we saw this morning, creating a data frame. This is a data frame uh, with different locality, elevation, and consistency of the colony of bats. But uh, as I said before, sometimes I, it's easier to load the data, okay. Here I read in, okay, it means I load the body condition index data, okay? I would, I, I do it using the function read.csv2, okay? There are several functions depend, depending on uh, what you want to load, uh, Excel, CSV, in, in this case, in this case, we are loading this this uh, data set, if you go here, as you can see, I hope you can see my folder, there is a, a comma separated value files called BCI here, okay? We are loading this one right here, okay? Let's have a look, okay? We load the data frame, okay? Where we got data, species, name, sex, age, and other information, okay? about individuals, but as I told you before, we want to work also with some environmental variable. Again, in that folder, we have other data concerning var uh, environmental variables. If you have a look at these variables, land data, okay? We have, uh, sorry, not three, I said three sites, but instead we, we, we are working on four different sites and uh, you, you can have different variables environmental variables concerning these four sites where we've been capturing actually uh, those bats, okay? The third part of uh, a normal, a, a proper scripts is data, data conditioning, okay? So it means that most of the time, okay, you will spend most of the time trying to adjust and fix your data. Then when you will run your uh, your model, your statistics, probably will be just one or two lines, but you will spend most of the time uh, 
uh, adjusting and conditioning your data. Okay. Uh, here I just go uh, pretty uh, pretty fast. Okay. I'm running line number 59, 62, 63. Have a look at what happens in your data set running these three lines. I want to show you line number 65. Okay. Our question uh, looking for body condition index uh, was uh, uh, to look at uh, uh, pregnant females. Okay. Because we want to see the body condition index of pregnant female to see which is the uh, reproductive success. Okay. So what do I do in line number 65? I get my data set and I select only the future I need. Okay. Remember square brackets. Here it means that I'm working on BCI dot data. That is um, our data frame. Okay. As you can see, actually at the end, there is a comma. It means that anything happened before is we are working, we are selecting lines, rows, sorry, and we do not do anything on columns. And what do we do on our rows? We select for the column sesso, that means sex in, uh, in Italian. Sorry, I didn't translate the, uh, the, the names of the columns in this case, but you will easily understand, believe me, also running it. In the next example, everything will be in English, sorry. And uh, we select females and adult females because anytime we capture a bus, we can tell which is the sex, and uh, with some measure, we can say if it's adults or not. Okay, so we work only on adults, females. So if you look at the data here at the top of the right, the, our data set has got 58 lines. If I run line number 65, let's see what happens. Now we have 40 lines, okay? 40 objects, no more 50 as, as before. What did I do here? I like you to think about it. I assign this operation to the same object. So I do not have the, the first object with 58 lines, okay? But if I want to run a different analysis that do not you uh, uh, i do need all the samples not just adult females now i lost it okay so remember that you can name data set in a different way okay but if you wrote your code you just go back where you load your data okay i run again line number 50 okay let me run line number 50 and in just one second, I again back all the data set without filtering. OK, what did I do? Just click a button. If you program what you are doing, you can go back and do whatever you need in every second, every time. It means that if you uh, if you spend some more times writing your program that get it seems uh, harder and longer and you spend more time doing it than just using a, a, a filter in a spreadsheet okay but when you have to do it and uh, if you have to repeat this operation you can do it anytime you want in, in a very 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 fast way okay okay let's go back again let's run these variable these lines okay and let's go back to the 40 selected individuals, adult females. OK, here I apply a function in line number 27 that aggregate. OK, what does aggregate? Take several columns, OK, and aggregate for a particular variables using a function. In this case, aggregate, I aggregate some number using 
mean, okay? I just easily doing a mean of something, of what? Of body condition index, you can see the first column here, the first argument I pass to the function aggregate. To what? For locality, okay? This is site, localita, localita in, uh, in Italian means size. For every study size, I try to calculate the mean of the body condition index. Remember the first question? Do we have any differences between different sites in fitness of our animals? Okay, I do store this uh, line, uh, this function, the result of this function in a different, this time I store it in a different object, okay? If I look at this object I created, what do I found? The name of our sites at the mean of the body condition index of every animal captured in every site, okay? Let's have a look at what we have here. We have a very bad column names, group one, X. What does it mean? Remember that we can rename our columns. That's what I do in line number 68. And if I look at it, okay, I have uh, localita, that means study sites, and body condition index average. Okay, here we are. I can do the same with other function, for example, standard deviation, here, line number 69. Again, I number that. So now I've got two different data sets, one with the average and one with standard deviation, but I want them together. And uh, what I do here in line number 71, I can make the, I can bind the data set using the merge function. Okay, let's have a look of, of, the, of the data set. Okay, now we have sites, average and standard deviation all together in the same data frame. Okay. Um, we can do it in different way. Okay, I want to go, uh, I go a bit quick, I want to go and to show you some, uh, uh, some figures, some diagram. So I run the other lines going away. Okay, as you can see, anytime I run the lines here at the bottom of the console, uh, there is a line pulsing, it means that everything went fine, okay? It means that what I'm asking is working uh, properly. Okay, let's start with some exploratory data analysis, okay? Remember, if you can uh, plot your data, it means you can run your analysis, okay? In this example, I use the function x, y plot, okay? And I try, let's have a look at what I do this time. Okay, what happens? I run line number 87, and you can see on the right that something happened. You can see a diagram where we have elevation on the x-axis, body condition index for the y-axis, okay? And then we have the four sides, okay, with mean, and standard deviation, as you can see here. Okay, is any relation between these uh, uh, sites? How can we make a correlation text? Okay, let's look at line number 89. It's pretty easy, okay? Just uh, pass the two variables that needs to be correlated and let's have a look what happens. Okay, core.test is a function that runs the uh, Pearson correlation index. Okay, and uh, what does it tell? Uh, the, the test is, uh, the result of the test is t equal to 0 0.55, degree of freedom R2, and the p-value is 0 0.632. Okay, so it means that is not significant, our correlation. But if you look at the graph, at the diagram on the right, you already knew, 
okay, that there was a correlation between the signs and the body condition index. Okay, it's pretty evident. So anytime you can plot something, it means you can make you can make a an analysis. Let's have a look uh, here on the x file. You have the number of individuals for every columns and the body condition index. So less animal you have 100 200 300 you can see on the x axis higher is the body condition index okay it means that smaller animals or in in uh, in in colonies bats lives in colonies in uh, uh, smaller colonies animals are bigger than in larger colonies when we have more than 300 animals in the same let's say uh, uh, in the same colony, the body condition index is here. Okay, you look on the right, the blue line over here. But in uh, when we have very few animals, here we have 30 probably. So uh, animals, the body condition animals of the um, uh, uh, of the bats that are in this colony are higher. Do you see any kind of correlation i would see something in this graph okay let's run line number 95 okay let's see what's happened okay if you look at the test on the here on the left on the bottom you can see this time is statistically statistically significant okay and it's negatively significant because it gives you the estimates so this is just the first uh, information. Here you can go on with the script, and as you can see, everything is com is written down and commented. You can go on and do it by yourself. Let's see. I want to show you another way to. Uh, if you give me just five minutes, and we go a little bit farther. Sorry. Uh, uh, working with a practical issue it, it gets longer this is the example i want to show you is a work that uh, uh, we did together with maria victoria uh, five years ago we were working uh, on uh, uh, tree masting in particularly conifer tree masting on the alps in europe in, in particularly in italy so we have a uh, data on cones production of uh, uh, several species of, uh, um, of conifer here in Italy. You can find all the data in the uh, manuscript. You can read here, down here, that we I, I wrote uh, with uh, Maria Vittoria. And uh, uh, let's have a look of, uh, of this analysis again. I want to clean my environment. Environment. I fix uh, the working directory. Okay, again, is always the same. You can fix uh, your own. I load packages. I need it. Okay, everything went fine. Okay, and I start load something different. In this case, I load a, a spreadsheet file. I name the file, okay, as before, and then I read this time not a CSV but an ex but an Excel file, okay. This is probably the most common things will happen to you, okay. The function read Excel, sorry, is uh, uh, within the library uh, read Excel, okay. You can see uh, here. Let's load this data set. OK, as you can see, we have the data set, six variables. We have uh, three species here, number of cones for the three species. Uh, for every uh, study area, we have several plots where we measure the number of cones for each species of conifer presence. OK, so this is the, the structure of the, uh, of the data set is our data frame. OK. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'm almost done. Please give me 
uh, give me just a few minutes. If you uh, are still with me, we can uh, uh, have a look of uh, of the head of the of the data frame. I change the name of the of the data the columns of the data frame, and then I start fixing the data. Okay, I just show you one line, then uh, you can run the, the scripts by yourself. Of course, several people collected the data, and which is the name of one of the conifer is uh, Picea abies, is uh, the species Latin name. Okay, sometimes people wrote P. abies, sometimes people wrote P. Dot space abies, but as I said to you, anytime you write something different in R, that means it's different. So uh, we have to uh, create our own proper data set. For me, must be all p dot space abies or p dot abies. Just choose a way. I don't mind which is the best one. You do what you want. But every if you want to uh, have data of that species all together, you have to name properly in the same way. OK, in line 34 is what we do to do this part. OK, we fix some name. OK, for example, line, line 35, the site's name is Cedrasco and then we set everything to Ched. OK, that is a shorter name because someone brought Ched, someone brought Ched. Cedrasco, OK, and it happens very, very a lot of times, OK? And then uh, we can run this part, OK? We can do some aggregation as we did before, mean and standard deviation, just to have a look of the data, OK? Uh, here we, I, I leave some comment uh, uh, in the scripts, because, because as I said before, you can improve your your code anytime you want. You can choose your way. Here is a different way. Uh, but then working as always happen. Uh, you started to store your data in a file. Someone else started to store um, their data in another file. So you have to load different files and work in different uh, and merge them. You can see here an example. OK, I run this pretty quickly. OK, till we arrive to a final uh, data set that is this one, where for each study area we have here three species, mean standard deviation, a coefficient, coefficient of variance all in one data set for every year, for every species, for every area. OK, why we have this? Uh, because this is what we want to do. Let's have a look. I will go directly to line uh, number 170 because I want to show you a different way to make graph diagram. Here is a ggplot diagram, OK? Let's run this line and have a look at what happened. OK, here we are, OK? It seems a bit uh, nicer for me, OK? More colorful. But there's still something that is not good. Uh, here you can see a, a panel in one plot for each species. Here on the top you see the name of the species, and here you see the production of it means the number of cones for each year. Okay, and here um, you have a, uh, an element that tells you which is are the color and the columns, OK? But here, for example, I want to read the at the bottom of the right graph. I actually there are the 
the years, but we cannot read it because it's too small. So if I run line number 121 and 22, OK, that's what I get. Have a look at the graph over here. It takes a while because we are on Teams. So I change the direction of the labels. And now at the bottom of the right, you can see perfectly the, uh, the name of the years. So before was like this, and then it changed this way. OK? I do, I do not like the X and the Y label, for example. I change it, and here you can read mean on the Y label and the end, if you run it and there are very very um, many examples on how you can change anything you want on your graph okay for example i remove the legend okay because uh, why i remove the legend sorry because uh, i already here for, a, for each panel, I already written down the name of the species. I don't need to have a legend to, re, to, uh, to recognize the name of the species I'm working to. So I get some space, free space here, okay? It is more clear the, uh, the, the bar graph, okay? But if I want, I, I can change the, uh, the panel. OK, I can say, as you can, uh, as you've seen before, OK, I had uh, two lines of three panels. Indeed, if I run this way, OK, we can have a zoom of it. OK, as I want to see if there is something happening together for different species in different in, in the same year, I can set just one column and several lines. So I can see what happens for each year in every species, species pretty easily, OK? And then I add also something, uh, uh, something more. And what we have at the end, OK, is what we have here and you can write it down you can see in, in the script we can write it here remember is the in the ra memory but you can write it down in your r uh, r disk uh, and how to do it is uh, line 141 and 142 you can print out a png a jpeg a pdf anything you want uh, set uh, the, dim the dimension and the resolution of your uh, of your feature, so you can have it uh, ready for your uh, uh, for your manuscript. Here is what you can do with R. Okay, so um, the um, the lesson of today was uh, I know it's been pretty busy. Okay, but uh, the reason was. Uh, to give you an overview of, of everything you can do with this instrument and to be ready to understand what we will do next week about uh, uh, distribution, distribution model, okay? Okay, let me go back here. Okay, so uh, you have all the data sets, you have all the scripts you can exercise during these days and uh, just to get used to use R. Then next week we will see something different. Actually, next week Damiano will, we will take a lesson on Tuesday because I have some other module to, uh, other lesson to do. And uh, he will work on, we'll explain the theoretical uh, part uh, behind the uh, model, distribution model, max and model, and we will work uh, on the package that we uh, contains the function that we will use to run models the, uh, the, last, uh, uh, the last lesson. Um, 
uh, you have our emails so if you need anything you can uh, write to us anytime uh, you want if you uh, are not able to use the scripts please feel free to write to us and i hope for today we are done thank you francesco uh, it's been a quite thick but it's normal uh, one of the bad things about our uh, about programming in general is that you, if you didn't uh, do uh, such a thing before the learning curve is rather steep but we will learn uh, the both of us also Vittoria <laughs> has to do to pass uh, through this so uh, if you have uh, some questions uh, well we can answer if not uh, as Francesco suggested just drop us an email we'll be glad to to help you or we can review something next at the beginning of the lesson next week uh, as Francesco said next week we will have the first lesson on, on Tuesday will be uh, again uh, theory the theory behind uh, uh, species distribution modeling and then we will see uh, in exactly one week next Thursday uh, Francesco doing those things uh, in R as we have seen simpler things this morning any questions Vittoria you managed to survive your R training years ago yes it, uh, it is totally true about this deep learning curve but um, the good thing of R is that you don't necessarily need to remember everything that you find a lot of information online and that some basic things that you will use them over and over and over so at some point you will start uh, memorizing them and if not you can always just open one of your older scripts and do copy and paste <laughs> sure uh, and with time you fall into the pitfall uh, me and francesco are already so you uh, uh, came up with a script and you read it and you say that but it's me it's i i, I wrote this 10 years ago but how it works i don't remember so be patient and yeah. uh, if, if you don't have any question, see you uh, next week. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes, and uh, maybe next week uh, we can start the very few minute, first minutes of the class just uh, asking for questions sure. if people get the time question, to yes. kind of like train on the scripts that you shared. Yes, sure. OK. Hello. Hello, so have a nice uh, what time is it? <laughs> Have a nice oh, I think uh, I think there is a question. Oh, a question? Oh, please. Yeah, I'm Isma from the Institute of Biology, and I have one request. Uh, I actually following your every step, but somehow I lost uh, some function. And could you guys share your screen recording for us? Uh, yes, I will. I will. Sh uh, uh, all the data are, are already shared, and I will share with you also the uh, the slides I shown you. I show you this morning in the first lesson. I mean, the stream recording. So ah, oh, the stream recording. To... Yes. yes, we can do that. Yeah, we can share also okay. the stream recording, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. I I think that uh, it will take some time, but but uh, at the beginning of the next week, the video of the the other day is already made. Uh, we just have to find a way to share because our Teams platform uh, cannot uh, export videos to people outside our university, but. Anyway, I can uh, place them uh, just to, to name one on YouTube if you are convenient with that. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Any other question? Okay. Well. See you on Wednesday, on next, uh, sorry, Tuesday, and have a nice weekend.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.